Willem Morel. Still stuck to the guy with the shield. Troubling those cave rats. <laughs> cave rats. Ooh. Glittering Domayol. 165 AoE. Nice. We shall take that, thank you so much. And take that too. Claim all the stuff. The betrayer, even Mafarath the betrayer, had a part to play. Who are we to say elves do not? From a sermon given by Sister Amity of the, at the conclusion of the Exalted March of the Dales. Got a hat. To Haim's notes, Auguste has made progress in the Exalted Plains. We are together in this, but Maker's breath, how can how that irks me. That weapon, or whatever secret is hidden in those glyphs, is mine by rights. Maleficent trusts me most. Bah! He won't have it, not while I live. Isabar! Oh, where am I going to run to make that happen? I don't know where, so we're going to let that go. <laughs> I don't know where she was running to. I was not at the helm on that decision. Oops, I missed a chest. <laughs> Hard and high down. Mm. 
I did get a key. Oops. Is that to this pavilion, I think, maybe? Maybe? I don't know. Oh, this one I probably have to have a lockpick for. A rogue. Yep. Very well. The Freeman's leader should be holed up here. This place has seen better days. <laughs> but it's still. Do you nice. expect cleanliness from a group of thugs, Inquisitor? No. <laughs> I certainly don't. I haven't Ooh. heard anything from the plane, have you? No, nothing recent anyway. take that and I will take this. Pages from Lord Morell's journal, the journal of one of the villa's former owners, the current occupants tossed it aside. Artem is the very soul of discretion. I could have a Templar to dinner and they would be none the wiser. None, none of wiser? Hmm. If the Templars haven't gone off to do makers know what, I might try it. Valerie complains, but the Empress herself has such an advisor. Why not me? His services are useful, and no one could better ensure our security. No matter. The distractions of the city will ease her mind soon enough. <laughs> Look at the monkey. struck a blow against the Freeman. I guess they were all just hanging out in the courtyard then. Red Templar orders. Letter bearing the Templar seal. Have a chat with Melifant. Make sure everything's run smooth running smoothly. While there, see if any of his men might wish to volunteer their services in Emprise de Lyon. We could always use a few more. Be discreet. Melifant's still useful. I doubt he'd remain so if he thinks we're stealing his soldiers. See. Red Templars. Why not? Seems we interrupted their meeting with the Templars.
Boy, that was quite the battle, but yet they dropped a whole lot of stuff. Yay! Killed everyone. <gasps> Crystal Grace! Yay! Looks like she'll take that. Thank you very much. However kind of you. Old Embryon. And what's in here? <laughs> Let's look around. That's a funny thing to have stuffed and sitting on your table. <clears throat> the Exalted March of the Dales. The Chantry's story of the Exalted March of the Dales paints the picture of the righteous faithful arrayed against heavens, heathen savages. Not heaven savages, that would be that wouldn't be right. <laughs> but I have long studied the Dales, and I find the acceptable version of the tale to be a poor one, laden with o overt pro-chantry and pro-human biases. Thus it is my moral imperative to propose an alternate interpretation, that the exalted march of the Dales was nothing more than an expansionist ploy hiding behind the mast of faith. It is easy to see on any map how large the Dales are. More importantly, they stand between Orlais and the rest of the South, and would likely have represented it a significant obstacle to the Empire's expansion into Ferelden. Naturally, we stood to benefit from propagating the narrative of a hostile, unreasoning people attacking innocent missionaries and making blood sacrifices of good Andrastian babies. The likely truth is that the elves merely wish to maintain sovereignty over lands promised to them by blessed Andraste herself when the humans showed clear intent to undermine their autonomy. Of course, the elves reacted by becoming increasingly isolationist, which suited the empire perfectly. Here was a kingdom that spurned diplomatic overtures and that refused to lend aid during the Second Blight when the Dartspawn attacked Montsimod. The Dalish kingdom could not be anything but a dormant threat, one that needed to be crushed before it awoke. Scholars point to the massacre at Red Crossing as the impetus for the Chantry's declaration of an exalted march on the Elven Kingdom in the Dales. They conveniently ignore the fact that no one alive truly knows what happened at Red Crossing or why the Elves attacked. The Chantry's response to the Elven aggression that resulted in the slaughter of hundreds was predictable. But in light of my thesis, perhaps we should re-examine the events of Red Crossing and wonder if the attack was truly unprovoked, or whether it is possible that someone saw benefit in sacrificing an entire village to justify the subjugation of an entire people. From a new perspective on the Exalted March, a pamphlet by an anonymous author published by the University of Orlais in 912 Dragon. Part of a key. There's a rune inscribed on it. Or part of one. A letter to Meliphant. Meliphant, I'm sending men to discuss some changes. It's nothing dire. You'll find the demands perfectly reasonable. We're willing to compensate you for any inconvenience. I want our relationship to be mutually beneficial. It's been going so well, each of us with our crusades. See. I think I can bash this. <laughs> no, I can't. Alright. I'll have to come back. Let me get everything new. Ooh. Against all odds, Inquisition scouts discover this amulet under the charred fallen rafters of a burned-down chantry. A mage who examined it said, It felt like all the power in the world. Hmm. Long walk to Halam Sharal. Only 65 of our group made it to Halam Sharal. Some gave up, some sickened, especially the little ones. 
Bandits stalked us. My mother, forgive me, I had to steal food. A child fought me for extra scraps of bread. A few days later, I carried her for miles after her legs gave out. She died shivering in my arms. I used to have a master, a mage. He fed me well, never beat me, even taught me how to read so I could do his accounts. But if he had a theory or a spell he wanted to test out, he'd get out his daggers, have the other servants tie me to a post, and carve furrows into my skin. I was so afraid. Every time, I was sure I would die. But at worst, I'd collapse, get binged up, and lie in bed too weak to move for days. The other slaves visited me in secret to survey the damage. I'd heal just enough before he needed blood again. That is why I traveled from Bull Dorma to the Dales with nothing but rags on my back. That is, uh, that is why there were one hundred and five of us when we set out, all elven. That is why I fell to my knees and wept when we crossed through the gates of my new home, a village for my people. Anonymous account of the long walk, as told by Brother Pecor of Ferelden, circa 140 ancient. the door. I'm gonna go a different way. Wow, that is quite the terrain. <laughs> you keep soup in there? What is that for? <laughs> I don't know. Maliphant's journals. Maliphant kept several journals. This one spans the time Maliphant spent as a sergeant in the Imperial Army. I see Laurent's death in my mind all the time. The man who killed her, one of the usurper's soldiers, was familiar. I wouldn't be surprised if I once shared a drink with him. Isn't that how it is now, brother against brother? The priests tell me to remember Laurent's life, not her death. So I tried to recall years past, the countless times she saved me. The day we first met, when I was a young recruit who almost pissed himself at her barked orders. Because of her, I learned discipline and control. She instilled in me pride in what we did. She taught me how to use a sword. More importantly, she taught me how to keep it sheathed. She was fearless, strong, regal, and she was cut down like a common peasant by someone we may have once known. Will anyone remember? Will Celine? Some pages later. There is a new soldier in our battalion, Gordian. He's an odd fellow with an accent I can't place, like he's spent time in the marches. It doesn't matter in the end. He's been a comfort, listening to me about those who died. He also lost friends in Selene's war, and he's tired like we are. He said a very wise thing. There is no war without soldiers. The Empress can't wage her war if we refuse to fight. Orle should belong to our legions. <laughs> I like the furnace here. <laughs> Very modern.
like they were repairing uh, statues and such. A servant's letter. A neatly penned note addressed to the villa's former owner. My lord, everything is in order for your departure. I've granted leave to all non-essential staff and arranged transportation for the time you requested. I have taken the liberty of securing the more valuable items in your personal storeroom. I trust you will find everything to your satisfaction, Artem. Sigil of the Golem. I wonder, have any of you ever used uh, any of the sigils? I mean, I they just don't seem... They give you so much, but take so much away in return that, you know, it, it leaves you with, <laughs> it seems to me, great vulnerabilities. So, do any of you find them worth using? Um, comment below. Let me know, because I, I just... I don't know. I guess I can't see the, the potential in them. I... I've war kind of tentatively worn them um, on occasion, and I just, you know, I don't know. Didn't like it. <laughs> I really just didn't think it was worth it. I know there's another key fragment around here. Of course, like I said, I do have to come back with uh, a warrior who can bash the stupid lock. Now I'm just kind of going around in circles. Circles, circles. Just in case I miss something. Can get out of the way. Didn't want to go that way again. Just kind of sail back through here. Sexuality and Thetas. What I find most interesting is that, despite the lack of open discussion on matters of human sexuality, there is commonality to be found on the subject in all the Andrastean lands. Typically, one's sexual habits are considered natural and separate from matters of procreation, and only among the nobility, where procreation involves issues of inheritance and the union of powerful families, is it considered of vital importance. Yet, even there, a noble who has done their duty to the family might be allowed to pursue their own sexual interests without raising eyebrows. The view on indulging lusts with a member of the same gender varies from land to land. In Orlais, it is considered a quirk of character and nothing more. In Ferelden, it is a matter of scandal if done in indiscreetly, but otherwise nothing noteworthy. In Tevinter, it is considered selfish and deviant behavior among nobles, but actively encouraged with favored uh, slaves. Nowhere is it forbidden, and sex of any kind is only considered worthy of judgment when taken to awful excess or performed in the public eye. From In Pursuit of Knowledge, The Travels of a Chantry Scholar, by Brother Jenna TV. Lady Morell's diary, the diary of one of the villa's former owners, the current occupants tossed it roughly aside. All this fussed over Gaspard and Celine. The talk was amusing enough. Now we hear of conflicts between the Imperial Army and the soldiers supporting that usurper. The thought of them coming here is frightful. Mother is right. Our most fashionable acquaintances will summer in the city. We should do the same. Raymond is stubborn, of course. All his little tricks and trinkets are here. I indulge his eccentricities, mostly to annoy mother, but we cannot have everything sent to Valorio on such short notice. He does insist we keep Artem on. He refuses to do without the man's services. I suppose he views Artem as another piece of his collection. Still, such devotion to a servant. Yay, stuff. I found the closet. I 
Now I gotta figure out how to get out of here. Ugh, but don't you just want to take a nap? Ugh. <laughs> Oops, this is the way we came. I think. <laughs> I'm not real sure. Yes, okay. <laughs> and out we go. much out here, but one never knows, does one. So I gotta come back here with a rogue and a warrior <laughs> so I can unlock stuff and bash stuff. We're headed back down to Fairbanks, so we will. Oh, we shall dig that. I think we are. Yes. Okay. Now what do you Keep have to say? Keep your hands and weapons to yourself. Nothing new. Nothing interesting. Let's find out if we have made Please Fairbanks happy. Of course. Up, ponytail. Inquisitor. Um, okay. Tell me about your people. Simple people. Most have lost family. All have lost their homes. I found a few, helped them, found this cave for shelter. Word spread and more came. We just want to survive. What is your opinion of the Civil War? When I quarrel with my cousin, wine is spilled. Perhaps someone loses a tooth. When Celine feuds with hers, a country is torn apart. Does it matter to a farmer or a woodsman who reigns in Val Royale? Yet they suffer. We are all weary, Inquisitor. Such is the way of kings and queens. Who are these free men of the Dales? Most are deserters from the war, tired of fighting and dying for a cause in which they have no stake. But recently, the free men have organized, started attacking anyone and everyone. Their new leaders are driving them to take the Dales for themselves. I need to be going. Be safe. All right, and I think we'll end things here. We've actually accomplished quite a bit, um, and we still need to find their camp. So um, I'll sell some stuff, replenish a few things in the next episode. So here, I will say Alfita Sane. Thank you once again for joining. Don't forget to comment like and subscribe below or you know any combination thereof <laughs> and i will see you all in the next episode